everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nemeseek. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about that IGN interview. I actually have the next couple of videos are going to focus on this because there was little tidbits in there that Johannes Roberts gave us that were pretty interesting. So of course, I'm going to put the link to the full thing down below. And I have that in my previous episode too, if you want to check it out. Um, and also my next two episodes, I'll put a link also in the description box for this interview because I'm kind of mining a couple things that he said in this interview that got me excited. And the last one we talked about that he mentioned fixed camera angles for a couple shots in the Raccoon City, uh, you know, in the Spencer Mansion, uh, particularly in Raccoon City. And yes, we also talked about the fact that this movie is called Welcome to Raccoon City and that I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but if you feel differently, you know, let me know in the comments down below why you like that title as well. Uh, but in this one, we're going to talk about tone. Uh, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, love to have that conversation. And sometimes when people have it, they don't really have it like they say they're talking about tone and they're then they mention things they like in the movie and i'm like well that has nothing to do with tone uh so in this one though johannes roberts in the interview said that you know while they're coming together for this movie and kind of brainstorming and, and coming up with ideas and throwing things against the you know the the, the whiteboard or whatever or the the throwing darts at the dartboard trying to see what sticks like they were trying to figure stuff out and when they got to the point of what kind of tone are we going to have? Because obviously the original Resident Evil 1 and 2 were kind of like B-horror movies. Like they were almost like, a, you know, a little bit below like a Romero grade, which I really love Romero. And that I think he was a big inspiration on some of those early games, particularly Resident Evil 2 from Dawn of the Dead to, you know, the original Dawn of the Dead to Resident Evil 2. There's some great uh, parallels there uh, with some of the police department stuff and just police in general and as characters. And so I kind of, you know, always liked that about Resident Evil 2 and one, why it's one of my favorites in the franchise. Uh, but when they remade these games they kind of took some of that b horror element out so when they remade resident evil 1 uh it's not it's a lot more serious it takes itself a lot more seriously and then resident evil 2 remake came out and again started to take itself a lot more seriously and that's what happened when johannes and his team were working on this movie and developing it was that resident evil 2 remake came out like he said, like a month or two later after they were kind of brainstorming what to do and getting ready for the shoot of the film and stuff and, and planning everything in pre-production, then the game came out. And so they all played the game. And he said, after playing it and seeing like the atmosphere and how dark it was and the rain and all this stuff, he said those were his biggest inspirations outside of John Carpenter films, which we'll get to here in a second. Uh, but that was a big inspiration for him on how to set the tone of this movie and how he wanted to focus on the story of these characters um, and how it's like just one fateful night in Raccoon City that goes out of control. And now that is going to be a point that I'm going to talk about in the next episode where he, where he talks a little bit about the, the characters, because obviously we have Resident Evil 1 characters and Resident Evil 2 characters. And in the video games, those events happen two to three months apart from each other. So the fact that he said one fateful night and he has all these characters in one movie seems to mean that something that they're going to change the timeline somewhat so we'll talk about that in the next episode but here i just want to talk about the tone of that and how creepy res evil the remake was and as you guys know if you played it yourself it is dark at times it is really dark and it gets really intense and really serious and although i had some issues with the plot and structure of some of the the events that happen in the game Overall, it's an amazing remake. It's so, so good. Uh, I love the Resident Evil 2 remake. It's fantastic, actually. Um, and like I said, I have some nitpicks here and there, but overall, I could play that game over and over and over, which is great because I could play the Resident Evil 1 remake over and over and over and never get bored of it. And same with the original Resident Evil 1 and the original Resident Evil 2. I could play those, all four of those games, and Code Veronica nonstop on a loop, and I would never get tired of them. Uh, I mean, health-wise, I'd probably run into some issues, uh, but then just me personally, I would be like, hook, hook it to my veins, uh, you know? Uh, but, uh, but when he talks about tone and how he pulled inspiration from that, but also John Carpenter movies, because he was thinking about this as like a single location film, which is, you know, what happens a lot in like early John Carpenter stuff, like Escape from Precinct 13, I think it was. Um, and then also, you know, the, you have bigger movies too, like Escape from New York, Escape from LA, and you have all those kind of stuff. And you, but you also have like Halloween um, and in these kind of movies. So he's like looking at all these, especially uh, Precinct, uh, you know, Assault on Precinct 13. He's like looking at that and he's like, okay, that's a single location thing. I'm going to pull inspiration from that tone wise and visuals and that's going to be the raccoon city police department sequences and then i'm going to pull from like you know horror movies that are set in a single house and i'm going to use some of that for the spencer mansion stuff so he was really i mean he's talking about all this stuff and granted i will just say 
if, if you watch my Venom vlog show, we had the director of the first Venom movie uh, go on and say that he pulled from The Fly and he pulled from all these, you know, body horror movies and stuff like that. And then you saw the final Venom movie and you're like, okay, none of that comes across at all. So all this stuff Johannes is saying, um, it, it doesn't mean it's true, uh, but that's just what he said while they were there filming on the day. That's what was inspiring him from tone of the Resident Evil 2 remake video game to John Carpenter movies. And I think that's a good wheelhouse to play in. Just like when Ruben Fleischer back in uh, 2017 or whatever, when he did an interview for Venom, he said, oh yeah, I'm pulling from The Fly and, and all these great body horror movies. Well, you know, it sounded good and maybe that's what was in his head when he was filming some of the scenes, but that's just not what the final product came across as. And so it, we may get that here too. We don't know, but at least Johannes is saying what his inspiration was. And like with Ruben Fleischer, I like, uh, you know, the, the inspirations for what Johannes is saying here, because obviously I like Resident Evil 2 Remake and I love John Carpenter movies. So, uh, so that's cool. And I'm glad that's just kind of his wheelhouse of tone. That's what he wants to stay in. And hopefully the movie does deliver on that. And it seems like a lot of the actors had a blast uh, doing this movie and playing these characters. And a lot of them are very passionate and sharing uh, stuff and, and little tidbits and things like that on social media, which is awesome. Like they're getting really into this and that's fantastic to see because it makes me want to see the movie more when I see the cast get that pumped up about it. Uh, so, so now hearing Johannes talk about it and talk about tone, I just thought this was interesting. I wanted to make a separate video on it. So what do you guys think like based off of that information and you know, him kind of, you know, kind of zeroing in on the tone of the Resident Evil 2 remake video game. Is that something that excites you guys? Like, are you guys big fans of that game like I am? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Would you rather have been a, a B horror movie that was more cheesy and a little bit more Romero-esque and something like that? Or are you totally cool with seeing something that feels like Resident Evil 2, the remake video game? Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I personally would love either one, but the fact that we're getting at least one of these things and it's inspired by the Resident Evil 2 remake, that's okay with me because the Resident Evil 2 remake felt kind of like the Resident Evil 1 remake in tone. And so those two remakes are awesome. They're probably the two best remakes in video game history. And probably even if you count movie remakes, because a lot of movie remakes suck. Uh, but, uh, but the Resident Evil 1 uh, remake and the Resident Evil 2 remake video games are freaking awesome. They're so awesome. Um, I don't know if they're better than the original, but they're good in a different, like if they're a 10 out of 10 in a different way than this is a 10 out of 10, you know, the originals are. So, so I love this. This is great news for me, but I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below and we'll continue the conversation as always down there. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all the fun stuff, and I'll see you in Raccoon City. Peace.